highlight of our meeting, we always look forward to the speeches. That's what we're all here for, not only to become better leaders, but to become better speakers. Our first speaker this morning is John Adair. It gives me great pleasure to introduce our first speaker, John. John has completed his competent communication series, and this is his first speech in the advanced communication series, project number five, The Persuasive Leader. The purpose of his speech is designed to motivate and inspire. John is co-founder and board member of CDA America, a consortium for finding alternatives for dementia. His involvement with the learning community is over 50 years. The title of his topic this morning is, It's a Wonderful Life. John Adair, It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> Good morning, Toastmasters. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is a wonderful life, and we wonder, and we wonder sometimes what makes the wind blow. We sometimes wonder what's down the road ahead, and we sometimes wonder about the miracles of life. The unknowns make us wonder. So as a child, when I was <clears throat> wondering about space travel, reading Buck Rogers traveling, riding in his rocket ship to other planets in the 25th century, I made a rocket. And after I made the rocket, I wondered how I'm going to power this rocket to outer space. So I asked my mother, and she showed me a glass of water. And she said, if this, all of this energy that's in this glass of water could be released, there'd be enough power in it to take your spaceship to the outer reaches of the Earth. Now another wonder I had when I, and I have still, is the wonder of learning and remembering. I know we went to school to learn, but as we get older and as we mature, we have another concern, and that concern is remembering. <clears throat> Professionals and experts were contacted, and we asked them about this problem of memory loss for the elderly, and we got two answers. First of all, Alzheimer's is a disease and not retractable or reversible. Right. Memory loss is a condition that it can be helped and reversed. So, they told us that there were three things that a person could do that could help prevent memory loss. A good diet, exercise, and most of all, socialization. Not the socialization of the chit-chat over the backyard fence, but socialization that involved cognitive encounters. Experiences of something new and different that gave you a new look on new things. This is the most ideal form of socialization. Now, <clears throat> prior to urban living, as we had know it today, most of us, maybe I myself, grew up in a community where parents, relatives, neighbors, town folks, gave us a lot of learning. And intergenerational experiences and encounters were abundant. But today, with the cities, large schools house all the children, and assisted living and parents living away from their children, intergenerational experiences 
I really, it's minimal at the most. So, we've identified that socialization is a very strong power. We've identified that cognitive learning is a very strong power. But what if we incorporated intergenerational experiences and encounters into these mix? Would it create a superpower that might send our rocket ship out into outer space to a more wonderful and a more higher level of life? So in closing, my thought is this, can this intergenerational cognitive socialization be allied with maybe called social maturity and align itself with our social security? Social Security providing sustenance and food for the body, but social maturity would provide sustenance and food for the brain. I think it's certainly something we should wonder about. So I want to thank you fellows, Toastmasters, and guests. And I want to wish every one of you a very wonderful life and a life full of wonder. Thank you.